So this is day 23 and I am Alok Srivastava. And the objectives of the day are, we are going to understand about what is a NFS server, network file system. The basic concepts about the NFS server. Then we will learn how to share a folder using the NFS or we call it sharing an export using the NFS based on the IP address. And then the next section will we will be talking about how to export a NFS share using the Kerberos that means a secure share. So these are the objectives and these are the exam objectives also. So take care. So let's first understand what exactly is an NFS server. So NFS network file system is a client server based application which allows the user to view or update files on the remote server. That means if I am sharing something on, on server 0, if I had shared a folder from this machine, the machine with a blue background, I will be able to access it from the machine with a black background or a gray background. Means any folder which I am sharing here, I will be able to access it on the other machines. That is the main idea behind the NFS. And NFS is normally used to have file sharing between Linux to Linux or Linux to Unix machines or Nix or like your Nix machines, whether it's a Linux or Unix. And NFS protocol is one of the several uh, distributed file system standards for NAS network attached storage. And originally NFS was developed by Sun Microsystems and was supposed to be deployed in a trusted environment. Trusted environment means where everyone is a friend. There is no threats coming on from anywhere. So there are no security features inbuilt by default in NFS. And NFS is a stateless protocol. That means every request which is made to the server is made without any information about any previous request. <coughs> Excuse me. So stateless means that means if from server from this machine the, the machine with a black background if I if this is the client if I am connected from this machine to the server and in case the server reboots I my machine will not crash my machine will not hang it will simply I won't be able to access the files till the server comes up so as soon as the server comes up my connections will be up again and I can start from where I had left. But one thing is that as I had already told you that NFS transmits your data in plain text and there is no security features. And NFS very interestingly you can share any file system like it can be your XFS or EXT4 or EXT3 or NTFS or VFAT. You can share any file system via your NFS. So basically NFS works or takes the help of something known as a VFS virtual file system. Because if you intend to understand NFS, then you need to understand the VFS. So as you can see there on the screen, so VFS file system, that means I can share, it helps me in sharing multiple file system using the NFS. So VFS makes a simple interface, one simple interface for the Linux kernel to access different file systems under it. So the kernel sees it as a, a one file system, VFS, like your hypervisor. It hides all the different operating systems. So all requests from the client like finding the file, creating the file, deleting the file, these are handled by the VFS. And VFS will then give the instructions to, to the underlying uh, your file system. So all operations are done by the user which are converted into the real actions on the underlying file system. So the operating system feels that the mounted file system from the client side also, the operating system feels that the, uh, the file system is locally mounted. It, it is not coming up from a remote server. So that is something you need to understand. So these are the basics like I have one share on server and then I can access it from a different, different machine. So the first task and it is an exam objective also to export a simple folder. on the server and I will be I should be able to access it from here 
And one thing that is worth mentioning here is that the read writes might be slower as compared to the local file system, though the operating system on the client presumes or they feel like it is a local file system, but it might be slightly slower. And NFS does not disclose the location of the files on the network where exactly the folder is which you are sharing. NFS will not share it on the network. And wh whatever I am sharing from the server, the server offer its file system. If I am creating a folder, I am offering it to the desktop. That means I am offering my file system to the, other, to the other machines. So these shares are known as or this mechanism or this method is known as NFS exporting. And the file system that I am offering is known as exports. And the client can mount these export as if they are on the local file system. So the first job and again I am repeating myself is an exam objective also to share a file system here and I should be able to access it from here. So there are certain terminologies that I am going to share you while I will be doing the lab. So let's configure a simple NFS based export. Okay so we have these two machines so let me show you the IP address. This machine is 172.25.0.11 and this machine is 10. So first let me see if I am able to ping to the 10 or not. So it's very simple stuff 172.25.0.10. Yes, I am able to ping it. So what I am going to do, I am going to create a shared export here and we will be mounting it from here. So this is going to be in your exam also. So let's first check it out the status of the NFS server service. So please make sure that this service should be running. It is running that is fine if it is running then it's good otherwise please make sure you start it and then make it enabled so that it should be available across the reboot so my NFS service is started and it is enabled also that's great so let me create a folder here say let me create a folder say NFS data so I I will be sharing this folder NFS data so if I show you this folder, this NFS data folder is created and it is owned by user root and the group is also root. Now I want to explain you something known as root squash. It's a feature in NFS. So by default, the root on the NFS client, that means the root here when this user is accessing the server it will not be treated as root it will be treated as a user named as nfs nobody so the server will not treat the root of the client as the root of the server it will be treated as a normal user nfs nobody so that is if the root attempts to access a mounted file system that means the root on the client if he is trying to access a file system which is on the server the server will treat that it is as if it is being accessed by the user nfs nobody i'll show you how it works so this is a security measure so the client root will not become the server root but it can be it can create some issues also like in scenarios where you want to be treated as as root so there is a option here no root squash so by default it is root squash squash means squash the root there is no identity of the client root as a server root so as and because my root on the client will be treated as nfs nobody so i should be changing the ownership of this folder to nfs nobody otherwise he will be treated as others and won't be allowed to write so let's change this. So I will just change it chown nfs nobody to my folder nfs data. So this is it. I had changed this to nfs nobody. So because the root of the client will be treated as nfs nobody. Now there is one file which I should be changing. As I have told you, the shared folders are known as exports. So there is a single file at c exports. Open this file. This is one share here. Ignore it. So I can write my shares also. Say my 
sorry NFS data whatever folder you have given now to which IP address to which machine you are sharing it so either you can specify a whole domain or everyone in the world read write or read only so in this case the file system can be accessed by anyone in the world with a read only rights or I can make it like this NFS data say asterisk dot example dot com and I can give read write and sync that means the members the machines in my domain are giving read write write sync means the write should be completed uh, before uh, we try to restart or reload the service or there is another option also that you can share it for a specific folder or sorry specific IP also say I gave 172.25.0.10 as this is the IP address so I'm sharing it for a simple IP then I give a read write here comma sync <coughs> excuse me so these are different methods in which you do it so I'll just comment these out here currently I will show you the no root squash also but not right now so I had just shared this folder save and come out so you can keep on adding more folders and because you have added it just give the command export fs reload hyphen r so if I give the command show mount hyphen e localhost you can see there that it shows me yes you are sharing this folder now I need to add again we can never forget this that I need to add my NFS service in the firewall so I if I give a firewall CMD hyphen hyphen list hyphen all so make sure you've got NFS there RPC bind there and mount D there so mount D should also be added for the show mount command so let me add one here firewall D CMD hyphen hyphen permanent hyphen hyphen add hyphen service is equal to mount d so this should also be added and if i give a list all here so mount d is added successfully make sure you repeat it for nfs also and for rpc hyphen bind also and i need to give a firewall hyphen cmd hyphen hyphen reload this should work here and if I give a list all it's coming up my interface is a part of this so these services mount D NFS and RPC bind these three need to be added so my server side is done what next I need to go to the client side so as uh, our server is ready we had checked it if I give here show mount just a moment before we jump onto the client side let's check it out yeah so this particular folder is shared for 10 and my machine is 10 so first of all just give the command to see what things are shared by the server so as my server IP address is 11 I give 11 so I can clearly see yes the 11 IP is sharing this folder for this IP address and fortunately I am the 10 so how will I mount it so let's create a folder here say NFS data it need not to be the same name but let's create it and simply give the command mount 172.25.0.11 slash NFS data the folder that we had just checked the same name NFS data NFS data and it will be mounted under my local hard disk NFS data that's great so if I give a df hyphen h you will find that yes this is mounted so for a from a client perspective he will be seeing just the folder so if I go inside NFS data I'll show it to you and if I try to create a file here say ah look it's done but it will be going on to the server so if I move on to the server and move on to the NFS data folder you will find here that though I was the root here I am the root and I have created the file with the root credentials 
but the file was created on the NFS server with a username NFS nobody as I have told you. This is known as root squash. So root of the client will not be treated as the root of the server. So how can I make it permanent? Because as soon as I reboot the machine, this will be gone. So you know that we can make an entry in the fstep file. So let me first do an unmount here. And then, okay, I'm inside this. Let's do this. Now open the etcfstep file and go to the bottom of the file 172.25.0.11. You can also give the name, no, no issues. NFS data will be locally available under my NFS data. File system will be NFS. Permissions are default 00. Save and come out and you know it. Whenever we do changes in HCFS tab, we give mount hyphen A. So this is a simple NFS mount based on the IP address we had just configured. So this is an exam objective. I'll repeat once again a couple of very interesting things and very important things that you have to make sure is that your mount D NFS and RPC bind should be in the firewall, should be enabled in the firewall. So this is how you do a IP based sharing. But the problem is that as I have told you this share, this particular share, if I show you at C export, this particular folder is shared for any IP who says I am 172.25.0.10. So if someone spoofs my IPs, if someone shut down this genuine machine and bring his or uh, his own laptop or desktop and assign his machine the same IP address, he, my server will be very happy to give him the files, which is not good. So. As I have told you, there are no security features within NFS by default. So let's, in the next section, like session of the NFS, we will see how to integrate Kerberos and open LDAP with it. So that you should be authenticated with the LDAP and then your data transmission will be secure using the Kerberos. So that is in the next session of NFS.